Yes, we're here. Amuna is our future with music and comedy uplifted. It's going to be elevated to a whole new level. That's today's class and I'm really happy to join you together. We are at a special middle point of the three weeks. I have the pleasure of having my daughter sitting here, Mindy, and I'm a little bit nervous to speak in front of her because usually it's just, you know, you guys online. We have the Facebook Live and the YouTube Live, Instagram Live. Maybe we're having a little bit of a break on these classes for the Rav, please God. Rav Shalom Arish, our host, and our beautiful center in Jerusalem. We're going to be going live, not this week, but next week with Instagram. That's where the questions should come while we're doing the class. YouTube and Facebook, you can send underneath and we'll keep those questions circulating. But it's not going to be this week. The Rav has a mission. Something big came up. So we're going to allow for a little break. And what we're going to do tomorrow night, Tuesday night, we're going to have a review. We're going to put up the playlist and Amuna is our future tour playlist that has all the classes that we had amazing, uplifting questions and answers from the Rav, Rav Shalom Shlita, and we had Boch Hashem, we had Rav Dayan Elgrad sitting here, translating in English, and we had our guest, our special guest, we even had Rav Ralph Cohen translating in English as well for two weeks, and our guests were beyond, you know, the realms of, of explanation and normancy, there was something beyond in a good way, in a positive way, in an uplifting way, we had Boch Hashem, we had Nissan Black, and that was an amazing, amazing, amazing class on current issues right now going on in the world in a global level. And we had Boch Hashem following this in black. We had a special class, just Rav Oresh and Rav Dayan Elgrad. And then that was the second class of a Muna class, Quest Q&A. And both of these classes just by themselves were already, thank God, online, a big success, heading up into the 80,000 views or so together. And then we had Rosh Shlomo Katz come with the music and it got Leibadik, the energy. We felt the energy that week. And the whole thing developed into now we have a weekly class from Shlomo Katz. Isn't that amazing? And not only that, we had, thank God, with Mordecai Ben Avram, a following week. Our wonderful speaker, he sat here and it was very insightful in the questions he asked to the Rav, took us to a different understanding of Amuna and how the vision of 2020 of how we should go ahead. And that's also, thank God, both these classes went into the 40,000 views. As I'm just an announcing the amount of views so you can just get an idea that this is serious stuff. And we're not just, you know, sitting in a studio talking to ourselves. People, thank God, are tuning in and you're sharing, you're, you're interacting and giving us feedback. And we appreciate it. We want to say thank you to you guys because without you guys, it wouldn't be so purposeful to do this other than between us, just getting some inspiration, which is good. But the Rav Baruch Hashem, he's, he wants to get this Amuna out there into the world, as we heard from last week's class of Yosef Daniel, which so far is our fifth class. And he really gave a big push. So what were some of the themes that came up? We definitely had a bit of a music energy with Yudnis in Black and Summer Cats. Definitely feel, felt that Amuna vibe, Yosef Daniel. He couldn't play the music, but he was able to be there. And, and, and sing a little bit a cappella. And now we're at a point where during the three weeks where there is no music, but thankfully we have Ravel Grod's Pesach. He gave us a beautiful class based on modern day post game that we are allowed during the coronavirus challenge where people are feeling much more pressured and much more down. I mean, just listening right now today to Joe Rogan, who's a comedian. He's a funny guy. And right now he's not so funny. And his recent, most recent class I just listened to, you see that there's stress on the comedy world. They can't have their comedy clubs and there's stress online. And, you know, the focus, unfortunately, say if someone like Trevor Noah is a famous comedian or someone like Ben Shapiro, who's not a comedian, he's a media um, personality. But you see it's become much more serious. Like the humor somewhat had to step back a little bit and we had to see a little bit the stress, the, the change. They're now, you know, everyone's in their quarantine or their badud of what we call it in Hebrew, or they're sitting in lockdown or however you want to explain it. They're not in their studios and they're managing to somehow figure it out how to go ahead. And that in itself was a class we spoke about going ahead no matter what during this time. But you see the energy of the comedy is not exactly how it was a little bit three weeks style, maybe. Rav Shlomo Katz said on his class, which we have weekly now Sunday on Rabbi Nachman's Torahs, he spoke about how we're actually in Elo right now. 
there's a certain feeling available because of the tshuva, but I don't know, tshuva, and uh, is, that, that was his words, we have the idea of music and comedy as something which you wouldn't really put together during the three weeks because it's a serious time, things are a little bit stressful. So what we're going to talk about today, other than promote the fact that next week, please God, we have Shalom Mazionz and we have Ravosh back here, please God, healthy and well, it's going to be hopefully with good news, he's going to be sitting here and we're going to have Shalom Mazionz, he's from Ami Magazine and he's going to give over a lot of Shalom, unity and mindset of Amuna, how on all his journeys through Saudi Arabia and, and Dubai and Afghanistan and places that you know I haven't had the merit to be at, that he has had those journeys, he's going to give over that Amuna, that, that inspiration and it's obviously meant to be that it's coming next week, Erev Tisha B'Av, on next Tuesday night, that we're meant to have this kind of class, this vision of the future, of unity, of what it's like to be someone who's in media and his personal journey, please God, will get a little bit of insight into him and his his questions to the Rav on Amuna so that he can be encouraged. But this is part of today's flow because we weren't expecting that we were going to cancel. We had everything set up. We'd advertised it that we're going live tomorrow night. And suddenly this morning, I get notice from, from the Rav's son and then confirmed by the Rabbini that we're no longer, Rabbini Orish, that we're no longer going on a class tomorrow night because the Rav has a mission. Something's going on. So we'll pray for him to be successful, whatever that is. It'll be kept private, but let's just pray and Dov and whatever the Rav's involved with should be successful. We put up a beautiful class of his life story on our YouTube video that was put together by the team down there. I wasn't involved personally, but we have the links down there pushing our beautiful studio classes. And we want you guys to join in and spread because 40,000 views is impressive. But really, my goal would be 100,000 views each class. Why? Because every question is relevant. Making Aliyah is not something just to like watch and, you know, okay, that was interesting. But actually think about it on a real level. What does the Rav Orish say? What does the Rav say? What is the divine hashba? What is the divine influence right now in this generation that we should make Aliyah or, or we shouldn't or we should stay in there? So all the different questions that came up, say in America, stay wherever we are, whatever our scenarios are. I mean, I was speaking to a friend personally and it seems like very much the time right now to just sort of, you know, internalize and focus on where you're at. So that's one of the things I want to say thank you Hashem publicly. The way I'm at is thank God in a brand new studio. That's what got built during Corona and we're able to do these classes in a nice air-conditioned place. My daughter sitting here happily she just has to be here for some reason and we have our friend out there helping us with the video and please God when we have our voice we have a whole team of sound and we're slowly hopefully getting it better and better. And we're going to try to put out some more like shortened versions and nice clips. There's lots of nice exciting things ahead. Plus, not only that, we're always increasing our classes. We have now Rabbi Yonatan Balash on YouTube. Exciting. On our, he's giving over a, on Panasa series. Be able to help us with the money. Everyone struggling a little bit with that right now during the Corona challenge. Because right now, in Eretzor, there has been that second wave. Personally, thank God, I had my test and I'm, thank God, I'm not positive, which I try to always be positive, but in this case, I was not positive uh, and I was negative and that's good. So I'm, thank God, coronavirus free and that was an easy test. You just go to, there was a corona van, it's pretty cool. These are the kind of things that are going on right now in the overall story. And we put it all together. How does it tie into the three weeks and the past years? We just went through Matas Masai, Chazak, Chazak. We finished Sefer Bamidbar. We're in the far last holy, holy book of the five Torahs of five Chumshe, Chumshe Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, of Mishnah Torah, that Moses himself is the one who's speaking this Torah into reality, this fifth book. All the four books before, and some say there were six, because the Bemidbar, you'll see, was divided into three as a Gemara, but, but without going into that whole concept, basically there's five books, and the four books we just had, Bereshis, Shmos, Vayikra, Bemidbar, and they were all Hashem himself transmitting directly to the Jewish people and then comes through Moshe Rabbeinu, the fifth book, Mishnah Torah, Per Per Dabah by the Shema speaking to Moshe and the fifth book came out that Moshe Rabbeinu himself was the one that it would come through like a summary. As we say by the Rambam, he was a summary. There's no one like Moshe, like Moshe. We have this summary of the whole Torah from the Rambam. So Moshe Rabbeinu in his time was to summarize the whole Torah from before that and there comes out a little bit of criticism, a little bit of intensity of the, onto the Jewish people and 
remember the Torah is eternal. So whatever's written there is something relevant right now. That there's a certain feeling right now in the world of intensity, and it comes out during the climax of the three weeks. We're heading in towards the time of Tisha B'Av. We'll talk about it more next week, hopefully. The vision that we want to have for the future, that that's the day of Tisha B'Av. It's not about just mourning the past, but it's about building the vessel for the future. The way we are right now, in the middle of the three weeks, we should not be talking about music and comedy. But I want to talk about it. Why? Because once again, we had a Pesach, we had a Heta from our Diane Elgod. And during the coronavirus, everyone is struggling more. That's the argument. That we're having a painful time. It's difficult. And to be besimcha, to be happy, to have a muna, we have to use all the tools that Hashem gives us. And one of them is music. There's no live music. Now, we didn't have Yosef Dino with a guitar as much as we would have loved it. We don't have me with a guitar. I have a guitar. And not only do I have that, but I have an album. I could put it out right this minute called United Souls Collaboration Album. I could ho put, release it today. And I haven't because I'm waiting for Tuba. That was the time which had this vision of a, of a universal collaborative event of all the different musicians in the world streaming in and doing a big event on Tuba Av 2020. And what did Hashem say? Tav Shin Pei. What did Hashem say? He changed the situation. That, it's all good. That we basically turned around this time from being able to do live events to bring it online, to digitalize it. And that's what Hashem's wanting. And even during the three weeks, like I said, you're allowed, Al Pialacha, to listen to music digitally. Like if you're, someone asks, if you're watching a video of the Rav and he's, there's music in the background, because that's how videos are made a lot these days. Of You know, my one doesn't have music, but a lot of videos like have, you know, corporate videos have these background music, like cool like stuff to just get generate the emotions or whatever. It's like every movie nowadays, the, uh, the, the theme of the music behind it, like we know is big deal. You know, um, one of the things my uncle um, for many years, he's been involved with one of the most famous, famous, um, amazing, <laughs> amazing like you know uh screen right i think the word is you do all these i mean you guys you're on a video maybe you can help me with the words i'm just trying to remember but basically there's there's a famous famous guy just for some reason his name went out of my head but my uncle's involved with him and all those big shows that he's been doing the last few years on his tour had it's all to do you know what we can right here google it that's the amazing thing we'll just google my uncle as we're sitting here unbelievable technology you know comes up my uncle's site and right there when you go there you'll see on his site here we go let's see it's then the bigger his his says on his site the life is about luck and timing i don't know it's all about divine providence but he's definitely been successful where is it he's jules holland he had to delay hans zimmer there we go hans zimmer event was delayed because, I mean, not delayed, was going ahead, was this big, 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 big visual event of all those movie soundtracks, that's the one. So that idea of a music being very powerful to create emotion and the whole movie industry and all the t advertising industry, everything we do now is surrounded by this intense music experience that we have, that's not actually forbidden. Like it's not forbidden during the three weeks, especially during coronavirus. Even though when I learned the halachas years ago, um, generally should try avoid music situations and people's feelings of when they go on these videos should, is right that they shouldn't listen to the music maybe turn the volume down or off. You know, the, people, thank God people are sensitive to the morning and the halachas. But because we're in such a specific, unique situation, time in history, and we don't want to get depressed, we don't want to get down. Mental well-being, emotional well-being is priority. Yeah, It's not just about how good a speaker or how good the idea is, but it's about actually affecting the heart level, about becoming into a health healthier place and that's what we hope is music and that's why I spoke about when we posted last week Nissan Black's new video best friend we spoke about to Nissim himself we asked him you know we want to post it he says look it's you know it's not my site you guys get on with it decide what you want to do so we spoke you know the Rabonim and like we said we have this Heta but we also spoke to Nissim Black about what was behind the song so the message if anyone watches the video it's a little bit goofy like comedy style and you watch this idea this fun like you know guy Z comes in and it's like ah and the whole thing and he dress up at Purim Dick it's a fun video you come there 
and it, he released it during the three weeks with the music part at the end. And you're thinking, well, you know, you know what's different? So we posted on our side, not because you guys who don't want to listen to music should. No, don't listen to music if you're feeling good. Boch Hashem, you're in a stable place. You don't need the music. Halabria, keep the halachas at us off. But it's safe for the people who need the music. They need the uplifting energy. They need to be uplifted. That's the idea of this class. And they want to go to, like, say, Joe Rogan or some comedy guy. And, um, you know, Michael McIntyre in England. Yeah, he's a funny guy waving his hair around. All these guys, you want to see them. I mean, a lot of them, unfortunately, aren't so appropriate, which is definitely something to think about. I mean, for me personally, if I would recommend anyone, I would recommend Rav Fischl Schechter, Rav David Olofsky. You know, the Rav himself has lots of jokes, you know, like you can go to his classes and see these jokes and it will see, you'll see something very positive in his way of humor and and the way he just even with our classes he just like he laughs and he gets that energy and like Yosef Daniel was making some jokes and he was laughing like you know I've been around some big big rabbis and you know they were like quite serious you know like um, I'll say some names because it was their personality it was known uh, Moshe Shapiro very serious energy like you felt a lot of Yerush Ramayim when you're around him and um, when I was by Rav Eliyashiv a few times I had the merit to be by Rav Eliyashiv and he, very serious I mean he truth is he was singing I was on Shabbos and he was singing a little bit to himself. So he was in a good mood, but it's still, you know, like you feel certain. But Ravorish is slightly like, uh, thank God, you see, you know, but you see Ravorish is able to give that Simcha of Breslov and Rabbi Nachman, that you know, Rabbi Nachman ben Simcha, that name, has in it the idea of Simcha, that his whole essence is Atzim, Betoich, Simcha, yeah? But when you do a mitzvah, you have to do it with Simcha. So you say, ah, oh, but right now, we're at the end of Tammuz. Tammuz is a time not for Simcha. No, but the truth is, there's a climax. For Misha Nechnes Adam, Mabim B'Simcha, Say Siddiquim. So Ad, the end of Tammuz. The end of Tammuz right now still hasn't happened yet. Even in the three weeks, we're still going up in Simcha all the way from Rosh Chodesh Adah. Some people say that. Even with the coronavirus, these last however many months since then. But at the same time, you go into the Rosh Chodesh Av, Menachem Av, it's coming up this week, and Martin Basimcha, you have to go down in Simcha. But Simcha does not mean you're going down in Simcha, you're still Basimcha, there's still a level of Simcha. You don't go into depression, God forbid, Atzvus, to Atzlus, to feelings of not functioning. That's nothing to do with the Halacha of Mir Basimcha. So therefore, and it says in my Hasidus in Tolna, he said that Tisha B'Av in, in Tolna was more Simcha than Simcha's Torah by square. I'm saying that from Tolna. So the idea that Tisha B'Av itself even should not be allowed to become a day of sadness in the most full way. Now this is a little bit revolutionary for maybe some people talk this way. But the concept is that we are in a generation right now where it's a kindness and fascist, and not just physically because of the virus, but it's also the virus. It's the, it's the sadness. It's the biggest avail there is. The biggest avail there is. So we have to have the music and the comedy, the jokes. We have to get a little bit of that joy. I had some guests this last Shabbos. And they were very special, honored guests. I really enjoyed And we spoke about these concepts of these three weeks, how they're very holy time, that they're Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur Sukkot, that we're coming up to. We have a Masechet and uh, Bechoyris. Bechoyris in Davches and the Masha explains it with the idea of an egg and its cycle, 21 days. These 21 days beginning from the Yud Zayim Batamas till Tisha B'av, the 9th of Av, these special days have in it, these 21 days, the growth cycle of an egg, have in it hidden aspects as the Masha of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, these special times, the 21 days that we climax again after the seven weeks that we count after Tisha B'Av. We have three weeks, which we're in now. Then we have seven weeks, which we spoke about last year and the year before maybe, about the idea of these seven weeks are uh, Misak in the Midas, and we go on this journey. Please God, maybe after Tisha B'Av, we'll talk about these seven weeks and how there's the seven weeks of comfort, but there's also spiritually, there's a, like a Tzvira Sa'oma kind of experience, those 50 days from Rosh Hashanah, sorry, from Tisha B'Av to Rosh Hashanah. But then we come again to another 21 days, Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur to Sukkot and Simchas Torah. That's the climax of the 21 days, just like Tisha B'Av is the climax of these three weeks. So what's going on? What's the connection? So says the Masha, there is. There's a hamtak as a dinam, a sweetening of judgment that we're trying to do through the goddess, through the exile, through the, sad, the sadder times, not sadness, but through the sadder times, the more difficult struggle times. And we're trying to elevate this time, these three weeks. And from the 
hidden, 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 deep inside these three weeks, in these past years, in Devara, and we're seeing Moshe Rabbeinu talk to us quite strong, but really it comes out, hidden love comes out, and that's why the next following Shabbos is Veschanan, we hear how much Hashem loves us, we focus on the love, the Avas Hashem, on the love right after Tisha B'Av, we, we're really even reading on Tisha B'Av, Einod Mavada, we're reading that idea, there's nothing else for Hashem, we'll talk about it next week, but the idea that we're tuning into a reality of oneness, of unity, like we're speaking about with my collaboration album, that once we tune into these unified experiences, these united souls, that we're all really one soul, all the musicians and all the souls, there's another guy right now as we're speaking, trying to send me another song, we might put it out as a single, another Baruch Hashem, talented artist, musician, because we need to get people's spirits to a better place, that's part of what we're doing on all our Amuna posts, we're trying to get a lot of positivity, we have Baruch Hashem, we have our new basks, we spoke about them, this is the one I'm personally wearing right now a lot, I know I have Kola Yehudim, to love all the people and that's very important in this time right now to get into that feeling of love and joy even during the three weeks so that the comedy the jokes we make before a class as it's brought down in Chazal in the Torah and with the kind of energy we bring out to get people to be stimulated in an enjoyable way so like you say well where's my humor yeah so for that kind of experience, you're going to have to come for Shabbos. You can ask my guests if, I mean, I'm not going to tell you who they are, but if anyone who's come in the past, we try to have fun. You know, some of my old students remember we had a lot of fun, you know, a little bit of L'chaim and a little bit of Simcha and a little bit of joke. Hopefully it was appropriate. I didn't offend anyone. And if I do ask forgiveness, but the idea of getting that joy and that energy at the Shabbos table, getting that Simcha, getting that feeling of experience of a little bit of comedy and then the Shabbos mirrors to sing together. Rabbi Nachman was the only thing, said Rabbi Elkhart, and we posted it just now from his South Africa trip. The only thing he was machbit on, he was strict, angry in a way. He was strict about Rabbi Nachman, who was always happy and joyful and trying to generate positivity to the world. Rabbi Nachman ben Fager, what was he machbit on? The people weren't singing on the Shabbos table, even during these three weeks. And even more so, I have Tisha B'Av. It says the Shabbos that falls out even on Tisha B'Av. the Tisha B'Av. We have to sing. I don't know. There's different customs. People have different minhagim. But most of the customs that I've been aware of and experienced, and for, especially for now, for this generation, we, we don't need to be good at being depressed. It's not, it's not going to help us. Yeah? It's, not, it's not a tool so much. Maybe for some unique people but, or some unique custom people that get simple from that. But for, for, for majority of people that I meet and know, they're all struggling so much and I see online and I see the messages and Gedalia Fence talks about it and Ravorish for sure I mean the questions we get for Ravorish the struggles that people are going through economically and emotionally and spiritually they need encouragement people need Rak Chazak Mi'amat it says Moshe to Yeshua and Yeshua to Amisov Rak Chazak Mi'amat only encouragement and Chizak we only want feedback that generates more Muna that gives us ability to Mashbir fine we all need to have a little bit of criticism we see from Moshe Rabbeinu it's okay a little bit of criticism but it's for it's with to Alice. It's not just stum because you want to say something. It's with like a, a, a gentleness and an and understanding that it's hard to hear criticism, especially for our generation. Rikiva said you can't give a, a tochacha, and a tochacha has to be with ava. Tochach says tochach, tochach, yud gimel, with the yud gimel, which is gematria ava, the echad, has to be with that oneness, it has to be with that ava. That tochach says, uh, I think the Rav Shimshon, uh, not Rav Shimshon Pinchas, Rav, Rav, Rav um, Rafal Shimshon Hirsch. I think his name was, yes, Rav Hirsch. He said that toch chocha is, ends off of a ches and a hey, which is gematcha yud gimel, has to be of a chad and a hava. You want to give musa, you want to correct someone, you want to help someone grow, it has to be hava. So who could do that? Moshe Rabbeinu could do it because he had oneness and love for Am Yisrael. And Rav Oresh on his level probably can give on some small level. And my, like I had told you last week, my Rebbe on his level told me, but what was my Rebbe's musa? To not get into a niggin of sadness, to get into a niggin of happiness, to have that music that uplifts, to have music that gives us hope, to have music that's inspirational, that has role models, like Nissan Black right now was on Today TV. I haven't been on Today TV and I don't know many Rabbonim who made it onto Today TV or any other these kind of networks. And that's an incredible opportunity as a student of the Rav and a student of Rabbi Nachman to be Mashpia, someone who went on such an amazing journey, to be able to Mashpia and I encourage him and then support him in that. And that's something which all of us can do on our own level. We all have now online tools. You can share you can tweet all the positive stuff out there if you're not online as much then you can still give it over to your friends your family like the Rav said he wants everyone the people the Rav Yosef Daniel asks what can you do to help so think about what can you do to help to get music and joy and comedy like a little bit of fun so my wife 
and I were discussing, just to like end off the class. Yeah, Mindy, who's that? Mummy? Yeah, we were discussing, she heard. You want to come say hello to everyone? You can come say hello. Too embarrassed? But we have Mindy sitting here. I'm not going to turn around the cameras. It's up to her. She can decide whether she wants to be in it or not. I got a nice picture. Maybe I'll use it for the audio for the Brez of Israel podcast. We'll use it as an audio. She's like a smaller version, so she's still sneers and she'll be in the picture. And Hashem, we can look at Mindy and with her tatty. And that's a beautiful in this beautiful studio. But that's the Tova that we can all do. Our name is Mildred Tova. So we want to focus on the good. And I was speaking to my wife and it was a beautiful concept of laughter. What is laughter? Like we've the way she explained it, you know, and you guys need to think about it. And I give thanks to my soulmate for giving me this tool, this idea. But it comes together with acceptance. The acceptance, to have acceptance. We spoke about letting go. We spoke about having self-esteem and amuna and being able to have self-worth and all these concepts. But be able to accept the situation in. Accept that there's no shia to my night Accept that people have been in quarantine. I had a whole Shabbos in quarantine, even though I didn't have Corona and I didn't need to be in quarantine because the person wasn't near enough, blah, blah, blah. But that came out, I ended up Shabbos in quarantine. Accept the reality, accept all the different things that canceled when Nissan Black had Corona and now it's public knowledge. And I spoke about it last week, but I didn't mention his name, but I had to cancel that booking in Brazil and all the situations that we do, that go ahead, that you have to accept the change. I'm a booking agent and it's a whole different world out there. What can I do? So I'm putting out, a collaboration album because that's the acceptance that's the versatility that's emotional intelligence you switch up your your strategies your approaches how to make a living how to have a relationship what to do now Shabbos you're at home with the family you can't go to shul so then you put the energy into being with the family and the shul energy to put that spirituality into the home into the family into your friends into your network whenever your situation is you don't have a family put it into the, the your sphere of influence if you don't have a sphere of influence you're, you're a lone soul can be then talk to Shem and bring down positive energy in the world because every mitzvah every positive thing every positive thought every positive word every positive action Action. It creates a different world. It makes the world good. And that's all we have to do. So what was my wife saying? Acceptance. Just accept. And that in itself gives you a sense of humor. It gives you power to laugh a little bit and not to take life too like heavy or serious because you suddenly accept that this is the situation. 2020 vision. We're just going up to Rosh Hashanah. Who knows? We're going to be in Uman. Where we're going to be. What's going to be with the new year. We're going to all go to Shul and pray to Hashem. We're going to pray with these 21 days now and these three weeks now and change around this exile in the exile and we're going to go through these seven weeks of Nechama and when we're going to come to Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and Sukkot, but we're going to do it with Simcha and with acceptance and we're going to laugh and we're going to have joy because remember one of the things Rabbi Tat says what's joy it's, and how, why do you come to Schok Schok Laasid this, this laughter of the future as your Yomale Schok Pinu that in the future well, our mouths will fill with laughter that's how we end off the class that in the future we will be laughing so much we're going to have such true comedy we're going to look back at this whole crazy joke of a history say with a guy like Trump we're going to look back I mean it's given comedians like Trevor Noah more material than they can even deal with such a personality like that and such personalities in the world and all different places they're comedians it's all a joke it's like a spiel it's one big theater and production and one big Purim fest and what do we do as a Jew how do we look at this whole reality that we're in and not laugh but fine, are we allowed to do that now during these three weeks or coming up to nine days? Are we allowed in al No, we're not allowed to fill up our mouth completely into complete hysterics. But there will be that final laughter. I don't know if any of you saw Soundgarden. It's an old video. But their mouth gets so big with the laughter, the light. I don't know, this black hole sun, but whatever. With Mashiach, not this black hole sun, but Mashiach, the big light. It's going to come and our laughter, our smile. As the Sadiq himself, we're going to sing to each other, says the Midrash. We're going to sing. Not, we're going to laugh and have joy and simcha. And this is the kind of turnaround we need to put into the world, the energy we need to put, the dafka in the coronavirus, in the three weeks, in a time where there's so much stress and struggle. We're going to have some joy, going to laugh, have simcha, going to have music. And fine, we're going to be respectful 100% to halacha to keep the rules, but we're going to have that inner journey, that inner panemius of wanting these kind of things and yearning for the times of Mashiach where we will truly laugh and rejoice. Amen. Thank you for joining us.